Hello, I'm Atsubo Judge, and, and we are just enjoying this month of March. Praise God. I, I, I'm so excited in my spirit. You know why? God is doing something. Oh, He is. He is. And you will soon see the fullness of it. Hallelujah. You know, just like when you're building a house, you don't, you don't see the foundation. You, you look at the way they're building the foundation. You're like, what are these guys doing? What are they? You don't see any beauty there. But they are working. They are working. And soon, it will begin to go up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is exactly how the beauty of your life will begin to come up. And men will see it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, turn your Bibles with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jeremiah 31. We're going to start reading from verse 31. Now, this is a prophecy by Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet. Now, I say one of the reasons the Bible is so important, it is because it contains prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. Now, that's why the Bible is too relevant today. See, in the midst of his writings, are prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled. So it, it helps us to keep guidance. See, as we follow the Lord, it gives us guidance. So we see, okay, this has to happen first. You know, sometimes you hear people talk about, oh, the rapture is going to happen very soon. And the rapture, and then they, they talk so much about the rapture happening soon. And then they don't, Pay attention to their own preparation. In other words, am I, am I prepared? Say, prepared how? You see, when we talk about preparation, people still think the wrong things in them. Oh, okay, all the bad things I used to do. I have to become sober. I have to become. There are certain things we do in Christ Jesus that naturally produces soberness in us. See, I'm telling you the truth. One of them, and that's the most important one, is having a true fellowship with the Lord. You see, I say true fellowship. I'm not just talking about talking about the Lord. I'm saying true fellowship. What do I mean true fellowship? When last did you talk with the Lord and hear Him talk back to you? When last did the Lord visit you? When I mean visit, I'm not talking about you see the Lord walk into your room. See, visit means he comes to share his heart with you. You ask somebody, have the Lord spoken to you since? Say, yes. What did he tell you? Mm. When I was praying today, I was praying about something. Then I heard the Lord say, don't, don't fear not, I am with you. That's not fellowship. That's, that's him just, you know, doing his duty to, towards you like I'm with you now. Don't be afraid. See, you, you can have a boss, for example, or even a father. And you live with, 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 with your father for so long. And you still don't really know what is in his heart. You may see him take certain action and you're wondering, why, why, why did he take that? Just leave it. You will not understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you see, a, a child, a son, can actually grow to become the father's friend. Now, you know, sometimes people say, is, is, what, what do you mean, son becoming friend? Is son not greater than friend? You don't understand. You can be the son of a man and yet not be his friend. Now, as a son, he takes responsibility for everything. He does everything he's supposed to do for you. Yes, you're the one to inherit everything he, he has. But then, you're not the one he trusts to share the deepest thoughts of his heart with. Who does he share those things with? His friend. So friendship and sonship, they're on a different level. They, you can't compare the two. See? 
But you see, strive to be the friend. Even though you are a son. You want to be the friend. You want to be that son that the father calls and said, do you know why I took this decision? He said, no. Then he begins to tell you, see, 20 years ago, I had this experience. And he gives you the full picture. And when he's done, you say, wow. Now I understand why you do the things the way you do. Now that's what a lot of people miss about God. They don't know him. They don't know him. This is what God did to Moses. See? Now, how do you think Moses was able to write what happened in the Garden of Eden? How do you think he was able to write what happened with those who lived before him? Now, some of those stories were already written. Yeah, you need to understand them. You need to understand this. Moses was not the first writer. There were writers, right? In fact, they, they, they started writing right from where? Maybe the Garden of Eden. <laughs> they started keeping records somehow. So there's been writings. And sometimes, if you're a studious person, you, you realize if, you're, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you study history, if you, if you just love to read and study, you realize, and I've, I've met some people that like, ah, I beg, I beg, I beg. It's not part of the Bible. Please, please, please. I don't want, you know, I, I like why. Now, I'm not saying go bury yourself in every material. <laughs> you read. But you see, when you trust the Holy Spirit, He will lead you to certain materials. Then when you read them, you begin to understand, okay, now I understand the season, this time, and, and why things were happening in this way. See? So you you find out that there, are, there have been many writings. People have been writing for generations. <laughs> Praise God. And, and so, but you see, Moses was able to write with such accuracy because of fellowship. Not the kind of fellowship of God saying, I am with you, Moses. Fear not. You shall bring these people out of Egypt. No. God, you know, you know why? You know, imagine Moses, and, and that's one thing you need to learn. Ask God questions. Ask him questions. Imagine asking God, why are you so passionate about bringing these people out from, from Egypt? Why? Why? I mean, why? And then God begins to tell you, hey, there was a man named Abraham. Actually, his name was Abraham. I met him and I began to speak to him. Wow, I've never seen someone who believes in me and obeys my voice like that man. And I, wow, really? So, so what did he do? You know, you're looking at me now and say, I don't get. So, yes, you can have that. I do have these sessions with the Lord. That's why sometimes when I tell you certain this, you're wondering, where did he get it from? <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. That's where I got it from. The Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, forget every knowledge you get in the Bible. It will, it will be meaningless to you. But when the Holy Spirit begins to teach you, that's when you will look at Jeremiah and say, wow, Jeremiah and Hosea were saying the same thing. <laughs> Praise God. And he said, whoa, ah, I never saw this before. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is telling you his heart. He's telling you his background. Seek this thing, I'm telling you the truth. Seek it. Seek it. If you have to fast and pray for how long, however long, just for it, do it. It is the most important thing. Fellowship with the Lord. Real fellowship with the Lord. That the Lord will share his heart. Let me tell you the truth. When we get to heaven, the people that are going to be closest to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you the truth, they are not the people that did the most mighty works in, 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 in quotes. You know what I mean by that? The people you look at and say, wow, this man has raised 50 dead people. Oh, he has raised 200 dead people. Oh, this man has ra uh, raised how many crippled people. Those are not the things that God is going to look at. I'm telling you the truth. 
Remember what Jesus said. Many people will do those things and they will yet not enter the kingdom. He will tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. The safest place you can be in as a child of God, as a minister of the gospel, whoever you are, the safest place you can be in is that place where the Lord visits you to share his heart and his thoughts to you. When that happens in your life, do you know what that means? You still matter very much to heaven. See, it's it just like a friend of yours calls you and says, Hey, I want to see you. I said, Okay, you can come. And then the person comes to you and says, Please, um, can you send everybody out? Oh, I need to talk to you. And you're like, okay. And then you send everybody out. Both of you now start telling you, See, there's a secret I want to share with you. And he starts opening up. And then you begin to realize, wow. So this person takes me this serious and important in his life. You value that relationship from that moment. Why? Because you feel so honored that what this person has not told anyone, he's telling you now. It creates honor in that relationship. You just know that you're not someone that this person is going to discard so easily. That's how it works. So you see, God, when he visits, that's what David was talking about. That the angels were saying, what is man? That you are mindful of him. What is the son of man? That you visit him. So the angels look, God says, look, I'm going to visit Pastor George. He said, okay. And then he comes and he starts sharing thoughts. Starts sharing thoughts with you. And you're like, wow. Wow. I'm so important to God. It does something to you. If you don't have that kind of fellowship, then you need to do some work on yourself. Let God trust you. I said we should open to Jeremiah chapter 31. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just start reading and we'll continue tomorrow. Say, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord from, from verse 31, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke. Though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now look at verse 34. No more shall Every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they all shall know me from the least to the, of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities and their sins I will remember no more. Praise God. Are you, do you understand what we just read here? Especially that verse 34. See, thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his, bro his brother, saying, know the Lord, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Nobody's going to be telling you, hey, let me teach you, you know. Ah, no. You know, sometimes we look at this like, what do you mean? See, is it that there will be no fellowshipping together again? Or is it that there, oh, there will be. Well, listen, tomorrow we're going deep into this and I'm going to start expounding this truth to you and how it's working even today. Praise God. Oh, I bless your day today. Step out, come back with pastures in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone, your debt is being paid today. Hallelujah. Just give him glory. We bless you, Father. In Jesus' name.
Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.